Look at that. Now see, you don't really have any perspective, but let me show you what we got here. This is actually one of these, these tiny little legs that uh, chickens make sometimes. I think it has something to do with, um, well usually this is the kind of thing that a chicken that's never laid any eggs will lay. Um, I really need to look this up, but um, apparently there is no, well this is not a viable egg first of all. When you crack this open there's a bunch of, a bunch of egg whites and a little smidge, a little smear of, uh, of yolk. It's not even like a, a well formed round yolk, it's just like a smear. And uh, anyway, the chickens are kind of starting to lay. This is the third egg if you can call it an egg, that they've laid in uh, the last week or so since uh, Mahogany died. So I guess they're laying again. I'm getting these nice, nice dark brown eggs. Um, and the chickens are getting their breakfast. It's been raining and um, going back inside because Oh, the, the files guy is upstairs, and uh, I gotta tend to that. But anyway, there's nothing I can do outside today. Anyway, it's supposed to rain, I think, for the next couple days. It's actually kind of supposed to snow or something, so I don't want to have any parts of that outside. So I'm going in. Probably do a couple of indoor activities. So, see you there. Okay, I wanted to show you the, the difference between a uh, regular size egg and uh, one of these little baby eggs. So, I looked it up and it turns out that uh, this kind of thing is definitely something that you might find with a hen that's just laying her first eggs ever and uh but you know when it comes to like uh hens that are a little older this is uh, an indication of stress or some kind of stressful situation that occurred now i think that in this instance because my chickens aren't really they're not really stressed out or anything like that but um you know they just went through a molt so anyway i wanted to show you uh, the difference between this, this egg and, uh, a regular egg. I was going to use this before, this egg. This is, uh, the egg that the ch one, ch one of the chickens laid before this one. So anyway, this is a regular egg. And this is... This is uh, one of the little tiny ones, and I wanted to show you, oh, this one has a pretty well-formed uh, yolk. It's fairly round. Um, the other times that I had uh, gotten one of these eggs, it was very, it was just a smear of a yolk. But you can see it's, uh, it's a good amount of yolk, and I mean, I'm sorry egg white and uh, it seems to be very thick and then there's a the little yolk in there completely unviable but anyway that's the way it is well, um, this is my, my project for today it's uh... it's not breakfast time it's like 10.30 and I wanted to make some, I've been meaning to make some um, fried green tomatoes. And then I'm also going to fry one of these uh, half, half ripe tomatoes. It's still very firm. It's par partially ripe, but um, anyway, so it's supposed to have a different flavor. This one here has a little crack in the back. I want to use it up quick. This one also kind of has, has this cat facing, which... 
which means that it won't won't last very long. It'll probably go bad before it ripens. And this one here is all bruised up, probably a little bit of um, uh, what do you call it, frostbite. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna peel the skin off. I hate to waste good food, I really do. Um, I mean, I could just feed it to the chickens, but um, the chickens are for us, not us for the chickens. So, if I can eat the food, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give them premium, premium food. Not really. I mean, it depends on what it is. But uh, whoops. Ready for that yet? Um, but anyway, I don't, I don't like feeding the chickens, you know, fresh, fresh time, you know, food. If I, if I can eat it first, because you know, primarily, the idea is that I'm gonna nourish my family first, and the chickens second. So anyway, I'm gonna see. I, I cut off the skin. The rest of these I'm just going to peel off. I'm going to cut off the bad parts and slice them up. Crispier. I don't mind the ends either. So um, the the one that's a little riper, I just cut into three pieces, a little thicker, because you know they're ripe and I don't want them to fall apart. So um, I was uh, making a video before, and um, my friend Garden City. She was like, oh, those green tomatoes. First thing I thought was fried green tomatoes. And I'm like, wow, I haven't had fried green tomatoes since like forever. I had them once when I was in college. And um, I guess I don't know if I made them properly. You know, I barely remember doing that. I remember doing that. I don't remember what they tasted like. I don't remember if I liked it. I obviously was not terribly impressed because, you know, I never thought to make it again. It just never was even a thought. So, anyway, she brought it to my, my remembrance again, and, and now I'm intrigued. I'm like, wow, maybe I should make that because I've always been intrigued by the idea of making fried meat tomatoes. But, uh... I don't know, I guess I never thought it was a, it was that much of a big deal. But anyway, so, man, look at the color of those scrambled eggs. That yolk is so rich. Anyway, as you saw, I put in, I put in uh, onion powder, black pepper, garlic powder, and salt. So... I think that, um, you know, I'm not going to try to be too precise in measurement. I'm going to just um, fry these up in the pan in this um, cast iron skillet. I'm going to use um, coconut oil.
these are done. They look nice and brown. This one is last. Oops. I don't like to, uh, whenever I make, whenever I fry something in uh, coconut oil, I don't like to drain it on a paper towel because all that goodness is going to get wasted. Right. So I can't wait to taste these. Alright, these darker ones, these are the, uh, the ripe tomatoes. And, uh, let's see. This is a nice one. Alright, you, whenever you have, um, fried green tomatoes, you gotta eat them, like, immediately, because it's the garden. They start to go a little wilty. This is the potato salad left over from a couple days ago. I thought it would go well with this. So, um, here I go. I'm gonna try this. Can you see? Alright, so, first of all, my mouth is watering for a little piece of this potato salad, so. Mmm. Alright, so I'm supposed to put, um, some kind of dressing or whatever, dip. But that's what the potato salad is for. Hmm. Well, let me see something. I think it needs a little more salt. Yeah, that was an improvement. It's really nice because it's like the tomato is still, um, the green tomato is still kind of uh, firm, but it's hot, so it's like nice. I'm going to bite of potato salad. Mmm. Okay. I don't know. Y'all have to help me out. I don't know anything about this stuff. I think I need a dip, so if anybody can recommend a dip, I'd appreciate it. So this is uh, the right one. Mmm. Wow. So it's ripe, and it's almost like I like made its own sauce inside the the bread and the batter. Mmm. I like the white one a lot better. It's like you take a bite and it just kind of, it just kind of releases its sauce into your mouth. It's a nice experience, I think. With the ripe one? Mmm. Wow. <laughs> I have to say I like the ripe one a lot better, but um I can kinda see the appeal of the green one. Like I said. I haven't figured out the dip thing or the sauce thing. Somebody needs to help me desperately because I want to really like this. I really want to. But as it is now, <laughs> I probably wouldn't make it again. But, um, it does make a good lunch. So, thanks for watching. <laughs>